Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day, morning or evening. And well, we are here to watch the next episode in the Classic Wrestling Series, which is Season 3, Episode 29. So, last week we watched Insurrection 2003. If you haven't already, I will leave a link to the video right there. And the mystery video will be right there too. But... I actually decided that I actually wanted to check out Bad Blood 2003 because it's actually the first one and we're going to be having a few more over the next few years so why not check out the very first Bad Blood I actually noticed that I haven't done it for the channel yet so fuck it let's do it so our opening contest is involving the Dudley boys oh this is going to be entertaining Bubba Ray Dudley and Devon were just on NXT for the uh, NXT ECW show that they did in the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So having the Dudley boys on opening the show, I think that's a really good way to kick things off. So let's get to this matchup. So in our opening contest, we had the Dudley boys taking on Christopher Lewinsky and Rodney Mack. So this is an interesting dynamic. So on the Sunday night heat beforehand, uh, Bubba, uh, Devon, sorry, Devon Dudley was uh, accosted by Rodney Mack, uh, Christopher Lewinsky and Jazz to basically talk about why he is always the one getting the tables, why is he the one always doing the what's up, all that basically. This was actually a really interesting idea because for the longest time it was Devon getting the tables because it was just how they did it at the time. Um, they did try to bring a sort of well why is you know why is Devon getting the tables and not you know Bubba but again it's just one of those it <laughs> the bad bot has a bit of a glitch ah, sorry I like that <laughs> that was actually quite funny oh god we got the red that triathlon as well I forgot about that for bad blood holy fuck oh goody that's gonna be entertaining to watch but yeah it was kind of an interesting dynamic because if he did if both if Devon did join up with Rodney Mack and all them that would have been a really fun idea because it's something we don't see that often. A Dudley Boys breakup. They did do it back in the like back in the back of the day. I think it was around the two thousands where Raw and SmackDown first started having uh, separate shows and stuff. But we got Devon Dudley, and the only thing that came out, uh, De uh, Reverend Devon, uh, we got. And the only kind of decent thing that came out of that was, you know, Batista, you know, Deacon Batista. It was an interesting idea. It was a really fun gimmick. I will say that. But it's the Dudley boys. You have, you know, keep them together. It's the Dudley boys. But of course, Christopher Lewinsky uses his mask to get the win for him and Rodney Mack. Rodney Mack is undefeated at this moment in time as well. So interesting. Also, I do like the idea of having Christopher Lewinsky and Rodney Mack together. They're both green, have them under Theodore Lawn, and basically, this was really good. Like, this was a really good matchup. You couldn't really tell that they were green to, this, uh, to an extent, but there was a beautiful power, uh, beautiful spine buster by Rodney Mack on Devon. That was beautiful. Lovely tag out by Devon to get the clothesline and then a splash. You know, Dudley boys are fucking tag team experts, of course. So, yeah, that's all good. So, oh god, we got the first part of the Red Dead Triathlon. It's a beer, it's a burping contest. Um, I'm just going to say this now Austin wins, Bishop wins, Austin wins. Just so you know. So, let's get to our next actual matchup. Okay, so we've got it's Scott Steiner versus Test. And I think this is the one... I, I think this is the moment where Steiner basically goes out to... I think it is. Give me a minute. I want to see if it is. Where, where Steiner slips on the apron. I want to see if it is. It is! <laughs> no, I, mean, I really shouldn't laugh at Steiner falling off the apron, but he just slipped and fell. He, he was going to go for the double hat sander on to test on the outside. But I think Tess was a little bit too far away and Steiner just slipped off and just face blood. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's funny. Sorry, I really shouldn't be laughing at that, but that was fucking amazing. So we've got Tess versus Scott Steiner. Let's get to this one. So we just had Tess versus Scott Steiner. This is... Meh? Like, this isn't bad. Like, this isn't bad. This is 
I, I wouldn't recommend watching this show, uh, this match. It's not bad. It could be a lot worse, I will say that. The funniest part is the beginning of the match where Steiner slips, I'm not going to lie. This was, this was okay. Like, it wasn't bad, it wasn't good, it was just meh. It really was just a meh match. After the opener, you need kind of a cool down match, but this is, uh, it's one of them. It is one of them matches. So, start, basically, Test goes out, grabs a chair, hits, uh, Stacey, uh, shoves Stacy with it. She doesn't actually hit her with it. He just pushes the chair into her, into her tummy, basically. Swing, miss, swing, boop, ban, in the tail, grab, ban, one, two, three, it's time to get to the win. That's basically what happens. Uh, in this matchup. It's funny, the, you know, the, the beginning, like, 30 seconds is funny as fuck, I ain't gonna lie. But the match is, it, it's a match, it's, it's it's one of them. It's like, you know, Test is really good. You know, Test could be good. He just had a bit of a she look with the storyline from with Steph and Hunter and all that shit. But Test is a good wrestler. Like, I've seen him wrestle and he's really good. Like, he can be good if you give him the right opponents. This story was a little bit, uh, it, it's a bit annoying, but it's just, it's one of them. It, it is one of them situations. If you don't have a good, you can have a good dance partner. It's just the match can be bad. Steiner's not exactly the best when it comes to something like that. I'm not going to lie. The second part of the goddamn Red Dead Triathlon. I already said who, you know, I already said previously who wins them. So let's net, uh, get to our next actual matchup. So we just had Christian versus Booker T for the Intercontinental Championship. This was a good matchup. Christian being the chicken shit heel, I liked. I did like an insurrection. I thought it was a really good idea for him to be the chicken shit heel. But he run, he grabs the belt and basically fucks off. Ref turns around and goes, right, well, if you don't answer for count of 10, if you don't get in the red, not only are you losing the match, but you're losing the IC belt. That was never established to begin with in this build-up. So, fuck you, ref. Then he gets DQ'd. This was a really good matchup, but just the last, like, minute and a bit really put me off the match due to the ref being a fucking idiot. He ca he makes the decisions in the ring to cause a disqualification. That's fair. He's the ref. He can't change the fundamentals of a match midway through the fucking match without prior notification from management. A little bit of a continuity, uh, a little bit of a continuity thing right there, but it's one of those things that I really don't like picking out, but I have to. That is... Uh, you can't really do that kind of thing. It's one of them. So we've just had Kevin Nash on screen, basically getting ready for the Hell in a Cell match, uh, which is going to be taking place between him and Triple H, with uh, Mick Foley as referee. Holy fuck, Mick Foley back in Hell in a Cell. I'm scared. And now we have goddamn motherfucking Jerry the King Laura in this ring for a pie-eating contest. Eric Bischoff wins this one, it's 1-1. One, one. I've already told you that one. Let's get to our next matchup. So we just had Lara Lisi Stones versus RVD and Kane from Tag Team Titles. This was an entertaining matchup. It was really good. Lara Lisi Stones are still new to the company around this time, if I recall. So for them to get their first uh, World Tag Team Title shot and to actually win the match, pretty fucking impressive. It was a good matchup. It was really fun. RVD goes for a... Um, a top rope suicide dive, you know, over the top rope suicide dive, hits Kane and Lali's assistance, Lali's assistance roll them in, two man flap jab, one, two, three, new tag team champions. This was a fun matchup, it was entertaining. So we now have Goldberg versus Chris Jericho coming up now. So this match was actually supposed to happen in WCW. The original idea was Jericho to build up to a match with. Uh, Goldberg in WCW, but Goldberg basically turned it around and said no. So they did it in WWE. There was a bit of a backstage altercation between Jericho and Goldberg around this time, where Triple H basically forced Goldberg to apologise to Jericho uh, in front of the boys and everything like that. So this matchup is going to be interesting to say the least. So without any further ado, let's check out Goldberg versus Jericho. So we just had Goldberg versus Jericho, and this wasn't your typical squash match. This was actually, uh, Jericho did get some offense in. He, you know, Goldberg made mistakes because he was pissed off at Jericho. But yeah, 
<laughs> this was a really fun matchup between the two. Why didn't they do this in WCW? I don't know. But it's one of them things. It's like, <coughs> what's wrong with turning around and doing the matchup in WCW and being like, yeah, let's do it, you know, kind of thing. You know, it's only going to make Jericho look like, a, you know, a bigger star than he was. You have him do this in WCW, it could have been really good, actually, but it's one of them. You know, WCW ruins everything. But it's weird to think that Charles Robinson, Goldberg, and Jericho were all in WCW, and now they share a WWE win. Very fucking weird, I'm not going to lie on that one. We all know how this goes. Spear, Jackhammer, 1, 2, 3 gets the win for Goldberg. This was entertaining. This would carry on to... He would actually be undefeated until some uh, Survivor Series. Where he would actually lose to... No, was it Survivor Series or SummerSlam? I don't remember. It was one of the two. It was the... His first loss came inside of the Elimination Chamber. To Mr. D.D. Bridge. What else his name? I think it was SummerSlam, actually. Uh, but he lost and then, yeah. But it's one of the things. Um, our next matchup, it's going to be... Oh, it's fucking Austin and fucking... We'll get to our next matchup. I do like the fact that when it gets done to the, uh, the sit-off, Austin's just like, Oh, fuck, it's the pissing sit-off. And he's like, I'll be blunt, I suck. <laughs> I fucking love that from Austin, I will say that. Um, so yeah, obviously, Aust you know, Austin's gonna win this. It's one of them things. But now, I a match I actually forgot was on this card. Flair Michaels. I forgot this was their first time, their first interaction, their first pay per view match. I completely forgot this was it. I'm looking forward to this one. It's Flair. It's Flair. It's Flair Michaels. This is going to be good. Let's get to it. So we just had Flair versus Michaels. Now, number one, uh, this is not their technical first time meet up. That would be in 1991 on Primetime Wrestling, where Ric Flair took on Shawn Michaels. But, uh, this is their first matchup in a while, I believe, I could be wrong. But this was, and then, this was a really interesting matchup. This was really fun to watch, and just see Sean and Flair just have fun. Really good, uh, low blow from the Nature Boy to both Sean and the ref. Basically brings out, uh, Randy Orton, uh, after the super kick from Mr. Michaels. Hits, uh... Orton hits Michaels with a chair, puts Flair on top, one, two, three, Flair gets the win. This would carry on until the Survivor Series, where it would be Bischoff versus um, Austin for a five-on-five -five Survivor Series matchup. Batista would cost uh, Austin his uh, his WWE you know, career and stuff like that. So it furthers the feud with that, with Evolution and everything, and Michaels. But this was a fun matchup. This was entertaining. Really good matchup. So, with that being said, we will see what our next match is going to be. So, I'm going to have to talk about the last part of the Red Dead Triathlon because we haven't got a match after. We haven't got a match. We've only got the Hell in a Cell. So, quickly, uh, Bishop comes out, sings his theme song, and basically just lips into that son bitch. Austin turns around and goes, you're horrible, you crap, shut the fuck up, I'm gonna spin the wheel one more time. Oh look, it's on Pig Pen Fun, let's have some fun with this one. Beat down on Bishop and then basically throws Bishop into the Pit Pen, Austin wins the triathlon. For the first and only Red Dead Triathlon to happen in WWE. But they do use the wheel multiple times. <laughs> So, Kevin Nash versus Johnny Bellage inside Hell in a Cell. These two have been facing since Judgment Day for the, w, uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship. They faced off at Insurrection 2003, uh, as in the last episode, see the episode up there if you haven't already, to basically uh, determine who would be the champion walking into this show. Obviously, we all know it would be, uh, it would be un <laughs> Hunter to do that. Austin comes out and basically says, congratulations, you've got Kevin Nash, Bad Blood, Houston, Texas, Hell in a Cell! My god, the delivery of that Hell in a Cell line was amazing by Austin, I'm not gonna lie. The promo package as well is good, and the song is fucking awesome. So, without any further ado, let's get to, uh, let's get to Hunter versus 
Kevin Nash. I'm going to say this now. Check it out on YouTube. Check the Triple H versus uh, Kevin Nash promo out on YouTube because on the WWE Network, it is not uh, tapped he taps headstrong. Check it out on YouTube because Headstrong is such a good fucking song. And the promo with that song is just fucking beautiful. It is a perfect uh, song to go with that promo. So yeah, check it out on YouTube if you can. So uh, like I said, Triple H, Kevin Nash, let's get to this one. So we just had Kevin Nash and Triple H inside Hell in a Cell. And my God, this was a bloody affair. Holy fuck. Even Foley bled. What the actual hell was this? Like, this was a good match. Did not get me wrong for the main event. But fucking hell. Like, bleeding, barbed wire, a wooden crate at some at one point. This was good. It was a fun matchup. It was entertaining. Did it need all three guys to bleed? Certainly not Foley. Foley did not need to bleed at all. Nash and Triple H, yeah, that's fine. Okay, you, you guys are actually wrestling in the match. But it didn't really need Foley bleeding. It's one of them things, can't be helped. But this was this was a fun matchup. It was entertaining. Um and yeah, you know, Triple H wins after the pedigree in the one, two, three. So what do I think of Bad Blood 2003 in general? It was a good show. It, it was a good show. It was entertaining. It was smart to put Triple H and Kevin Nash in the main event to finish the feud off and inside Hell in a Cell. Uh Booker T and, uh Booker T and Christian was good up until the finish. The opening match, uh, the Dudley Boys and Christopher Lewinsky with Rodney Mack, uh, that was good too. It was an entertaining show. It was really fun. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching episode 29 of season 3 of the Classic Wrestling Series. Next week is the season finale of season 3 and I do have an announcement in regards to that. But that is for next week. So with that being said, I will see you then. TTFN. Ta-ta. For now.